So uh, we talked last year. Uh, That's right. And uh, I think you know some of the audience are different uh, online and and here. So maybe we could start with an introduction to ePay. What what's different about it? Sure. Uh, it's actually good to uh, speak after Tim Draper because he's actually one of our early investors. Uh, so ePay was founded back in uh, 2003, so we, ha we have been around for some time. Uh, and basically we provide payment services for a lot of the uh, online merchants uh, as well as the uh, traditional business. Uh, we um, established a partnership with all the major commercial banks here in China. Uh, and if you ask about how do, we, uh, how do we differ from other payment platforms here in China, uh, I think we differentiate in, in mainly in three areas. Uh, the first thing is that we try to focus on vertical payments. Uh, if you look at the big players like Alipay or China Pay, uh, they're more like uh, what we call the horizontal payments because they, they really see payment as a, a generic tool. Uh, in our case, we try to focus on the vertical uh, industry-specific solutions. Uh, for example, payment for online retail, payment for uh, online gaming, uh, as well as payment for uh, you know air and travel and uh, uh, telecom and education, so we can provide custom-made solutions for all these different industries. Uh, and I think the second thing is that in addition to the uh, uh, the payment service, the core payment services, we also provide a lot of the value-added services. Uh, for example, one of the uh, the features that we have is that we can uh, provide supply chain financing for a lot of the merchants. Uh, so basically we can uh, relieve their uh, cash flow pressure and help to expand their business. Uh, and the third thing is that uh, we try to provide a total solution for uh, all these merchant customers. Right? In, in addition to online payments, uh, we also do uh, telephone-based and call center payments uh, as well as uh, mobile payments. Uh, and in addition to uh, supporting uh, uh, bank cards payments, we also uh, support other fund sources. For example, uh, a lot of our online gaming users, they can use prepaid cards. Uh, to pay for uh, digital accountants. Yeah. Ca could you take us through, you know, what would a typical user experience be of, of using the service? Well, it depends on which vertical we're Let's talking about. Let's say a game. Let's say a game. Well, if you are an online gaming user, uh, well, the typical experience is that you can go to the, the game website and if you want to purchase some, you know, time or equipment, you basically uh, go to the check checkout page, right? And then you get redirected to our payment service page. Uh, where you can select the bank uh, that you have the bank card from, right? And then you uh, basically get redirected again to the issuing bank's website where you can enter your uh, you know, account number and password to authorize the final payment. Uh, and that's, that's just the bank card-based payments. And like I said, in a lot of cases, we also support other funding sources. So uh, especially for online game users, uh, a lot of them actually are using uh, prepaid cards uh, to pay for digital accountants. Uh, there's been quite a lot of uh, worry in online payment circles recently about uh, increased regulation uh, and increased scrutiny from regulators. Uh, how, do, how do you see that in China? Because it obviously, when dealing with transferring money, you're dealing with some of the more uh, important and possibly sensitive uh, parts of the Chinese economy. Uh, how do you see the regulatory risk and uh, how do you think that this is going to alter the landscape uh, in your industry? Yeah, that's actually a very good question. Uh, and a actually, as we speak today, you know, we just like all the major. Uh, oops. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, all the major payment companies just got the license. Uh, just got their license yesterday. Uh, you know, like yesterday was actually a milestone in our sector uh, because uh, the first 27 payment providers uh, actually obtained their official payment license from the People's Bank of China. Uh, and ePay is among one of the uh, the 27 uh, you know companies who got the first batch of licenses. Uh, and obviously, we are in a very sensitive business, right? It's a mission critical application because we're uh, we're dealing with money, and it's it's not even our own money. We're actually counting you know our merchant customers' money. So this industry has to be regulated in some way, uh, and there has been talks in, in our areas in the, in the past five years, right? The first draft regulation actually came out back in 2006, uh, and all the major players in this uh, sector actively participated in the discussion of the, uh, of the regulation. Uh, and uh, last year, uh, it officially came out, uh, the, the, the new regulation, and just to, you know, as a matter of yesterday, we, we got the first batch of licenses. Uh, and, and in the future, I think this, this industry is still going to be regulated. 
uh, again, because it's a mission critical system, right? Uh, but I think uh, the, the point is that the regulation in some way has to be a bottom up, not only top down, right? It has to be market driven, not only uh, policy driven. Uh, otherwise, it's going to stifle the innovation in this area. And do you think that is going to be the case? Uh, you know, to sort of repeat the question, is that uh, do you not see a danger that, uh, say, the big banks will decide that they want well, the I, action? I think it's, it's relatively open in a, in a way because if you look at the 27 companies who have received the, uh, the first batch of licenses, a lot of them are not uh, state enterprises. You know, a lot of them are like just companies, private companies just like us. Right. So in a way, this represents the, uh, the, the progress right, in, the, in, in the policy uh, by the government right, because it's becoming more open and right, more participative. Yeah. Can we talk about some numbers, uh, user numbers, uh, merchant numbers, uh, revenue numbers? Uh, what can you tell us? Yeah, sure. Uh, some of the things, obviously, we cannot disclose, but you know, for the numbers that we can talk about, you, know, you can... <laughs> Ask us the questions. Right. All right. Well, let, let's start with uh, end users, people who actually use ePay in one way or another right. to pay for a service. How many of them are there? Yeah, we, we have about uh, uh, close to 30 million registered users. But, but in our case, uh, actually, in most cases, we don't even require the users to register. Uh, so a more accurate measurement is probably by the, uh, uh, the coverage. So our quarterly coverage is about 40 to 50 million users. Yeah. Because the, the way that users use our uh, payment service is really they go to the merchant's website, right? And then they don't have to register with us. They just go through the, uh, the bank authorization process. Yeah. So uh, in some ways, it's not so important for you to build your own brand with the end users if you have merchants using your service. Is that correct? Well, we would like to build a brand because payment is all about trust, right? So somehow you have to... Uh, uh, build a consumer brand that users can trust you, right? Just like if you look at Visa and MasterCard, right? They don't really have uh, direct users, right? The direct customers are really the banks. Uh, but in, in our case, you, you're right in the sense that payment is not really a, a service that's directly, uh, you know, perceived by the end users. Uh, to, to, the, to the consumers, you know, none of them are going to approach us and say, I want to buy payment from you, right? We're only a, a step in their buying process, right? We're, we're only a, a means to the end. So basically, if you look at the, the experience of the end user, they just want to buy an airline ticket or they just want to pay for a game. Uh, and we're, we're just the, uh, you know, the intermediate process. So the way we have to market ourselves is really to work with the merchants right, and, and to acquire the, the users through our merchants. And how many merchants are you working with now? Uh, we have uh, like a three-tier system. Right? The first tier is our direct sales merchants. Uh, these are most... Uh, are mostly uh, like the big brand names, right? Like you know, China Unicom, uh, like all the major airlines, uh, and some of the the well-known uh, internet sites, uh, and uh, we, we call them the contract merchants. So ba basically, we have to sign a contract with, with these merchants individually, uh, and we have about thirty uh, thousand merchants like this in this tier, uh, and the second tier of merchants are really the the channel merchant customers, right? So basically, we work with channels. Uh, to sign up merchants, and in some cases, our direct merchants themselves can be payment platforms that connect to other merchants, uh, and it's, it's really hard to, uh, to to count, right? Because, for example, in uh, we have a partner called Vogin, so what they do is that they provide the middleware for uh, uh, the MTK uh, cell phones, right? So basically, like all the the application developers, uh, based on their platform, are going to use our payment services because our service is integrated into their platform. Right. And the third tier, uh, the, third, the third tier merchants are really the, those self-service merchants, right? like, the, uh, like the merchants on Alipay or PayPal. So basically they can just uh, sign up and uh, use our service directly. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, how is mobile going to affect your industry and your company? Uh, we, we're actually one of the, uh, the biggest mobile payment providers here in China. Uh, and, well, the first thing I guess I have to do is to clarify the, the term mobile payments, right? I mean, if you look at the, the mobile payment that uh, those, you know, telecom carriers are talking about, uh, they really refer to NFC payments, right? The, the payments used in a, in a retail scenario, uh, in which you just swipe your phone like a credit card, right? But, but in our case, we're talking about mobile payment, 
uh, in, in a sense, more like uh, the payments that you're, do you're going to do on your iPhone app store. Right? So basically, you're buying digital contents uh, in a remote transaction, uh, in a non-face-to-face -face transaction. So in, in that case, we're actually one of the, uh, the largest payment service providers uh, for mobile payments uh, because we work with uh, a lot of the uh, uh, you know, content providers uh, as well as the, uh, the middleware platforms and also uh, like the, uh, the phone manufacturers. Like we have a partnership with Nokia uh, and we also work with uh, carriers uh, in some cases. So yeah. who is buying stuff? using their mobile, using your system in China at the moment? What kinds of things are they well, buying? Well, uh, I would say like most people, uh, at least from our understanding is that, well, th there are more and more people buying real stuff. I, I mean, like, uh, you know, the stuff you can buy on Taobao, right, on, on mobile phones, but they're still in a minority. Uh, the majority of transactions that we see on mobile phones are really based on, you know, digital entertainment and digital contents. Uh, it's exactly the similar, you know, um, behavior you can see on, on, on an iPhone app store, right? So that, that's basically the, the payment that we're trying to provide, you know, facilitating buying digital contents uh, on your mobile phone. I, I mean, do you see the, the other kind of transaction as having a future? Because it's, it's another one of those uh, businesses that, uh, you know, we've been hearing talk about it for more than 10 years. Well, Everybody says, yes, in Kenya this is working. <laughs> Um, it's yeah. quite difficult to find other examples of the real digital wallet. I, I think eventually it's going to take off. I mean, you're asking about buying real stuff on your mobile phones, right? But, uh, because if you look at the mobile internet, it's actually going through stages, right? I mean, it's just like the development, the evolution of the internet, right? If you look at the, uh, uh, the internet market in China, right, 10 years ago, uh, most of the, uh, the companies that went IPO are, were, were like big portals, right? like Sina or Sohu, right? So that was like the age of uh, portals and search engines. Uh, because back then, the internet was just the uh, uh, information platform. Right. And five years ago, you saw a lot of companies uh, who went public were like gaming companies, like Shengda, right? Uh, because that was the age of uh, entertainment and applications. Uh, and today, you, you begin to see a lot of the uh, uh, you know, e-commerce companies, right? So it's basically the, the emergence of uh, uh, e-commerce sites. So I, I would think it's going to be similar on the mobile uh, internet, right? So today, most of the uh, activities you see on mobile phones are still uh, related to digital, digital contents and digital entertainment. Uh, but maybe in the future, there are more people uh, you know, buying real stuff on mobile phones. But it's going to take some time. Can you uh, reveal anything about ePay's plans for the next year or two? Uh, yeah, I, I think yesterday we just reached a major milestone because we uh, obtained the official payment license, uh, and that has been the uh, had been the, the first priority for us in the past two years. Uh, in the future, I think we're uh, we're going to further strengthen our uh, you know advantages. Uh, basically, our focus on the vertical solutions, uh, value-added services, and total solutions, uh, and maybe um, uh, and we also became profitable since 2009. So maybe we're going to consider an IPO in the next two years as well. In the next two years. Yes. That's you're considering now. <clears throat> well, nothing concrete, but I guess that's the uh, natural, uh, you know, evolution. Okay. Uh, who do you think is your strongest competitor? Uh, well, I think there obviously there are some big names that everyone had heard about, like Alipay or you know Tenpay, because they're backed by uh, you know like big platforms like Alibaba and Tencent. Uh, so definitely there are some intense competitions from you know those players. Uh, but again, I would like to say the biggest competition is really not within this industry. It's really the competition between uh, e-payment and traditional and legacy payments. Uh, because even this market has been growing over 100 percent on an annual basis, uh, and still the the, over, the, the overall e-payment market, the, the transaction volume is still relatively a very small percentage uh, of all the transactions in in China. Right. So the biggest goal, the biggest objective, is really to convert more legacy payment systems into e-payment, and I think that's the biggest competition. So uh, can, let me ask a question from my sort of personal point of view. I mean, I, I have a, a company that makes a website, does research work. We have a relatively low volume of, of clients uh, that we have to bill, and billing in China can be a hassle. Uh, the banking system, sometimes I think, 
uh, when you actually have to deal with the bank, it feels like you're still in the Qing dynasty. Everything needs to be chopped. There's a lot of paperwork. My accountant spends a long time at the bank. Is there a, a product you could offer me that I could go to research clients who are used to either sending a paper check or doing a bank transfer that could give, give me a kind of a one-click solution? Oh, yeah, we can, we can do online payment right away. I mean, we, if you integrate our payment service into a website, you know, basically your clients can, you know, just with a couple of clicks, they can, they can make payments online instead of going to the banks and doing the wires. And to be concrete, what would they have to have in order to do that? Would just a, a regular bank card They just need to have suffice? a regular bank card uh, enabled for, uh, you know, online banking. Uh, well, in some cases, we can, we can support cards that, you know, without the... Uh, uh, without the online banking features as well. Yeah. So, in other words, like a, a regular Yinlian... Regular uh, Yinlian China Union pay cards. That would suffice. Okay. Well, that's very good news. So, on that note, I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you and very best much. Best of luck for the next two years. Thank you. <laughs>